Hi, welcome to this video about PyTorch, Data Loader and the Collate function. I think this is useful stuff to know about, for example to make your data loading more efficient during training. To begin with, let me just show you this toy dataset that I created here. I'm printing out all the items. And this is a fake scenario where each item consists of a variable x, which is a sequence, and a target variable y, which is a, a binary variable. So this, it turns out this is not quite the shape that we need the data to be in, in order to stick it into the network. To do that, we need to pack the data into batches. So that's when the data loader comes in. The data loader, in this case coming from PyTorch, is basically a device that knows how to consume this data set and put items into these batches. We're disabling the shuffling here just for debugging purposes. So what you basically want to do is, say during training or evaluation, is go over the patches of your data loader and do stuff with them. For example, computing predictions, losses, etc. So let's see what happens if we try to go over this data loader. We find that we get an error, and this error is coming from the default collate function and the message says that the elements of the list should be of equal size. So the problem is basically coming because we're trying to pass these two elements and the sequences in this case this one and this one have different lengths. So the default collate function that is being used from the data loader in the data loader is not able to deal with that. So that is the fundamental problem that we are dealing with here. So here's one potential solution to this problem. We could refactor our data set to have a parameter called max length. And what we, re we will be basically doing is whenever we deliver an item, we pad the original sequence x in this case with zeros, to match this maximum length in case that the sequence is shorter than it has to be. So let's take a look at that data set. We're going to print the items. And as we see, that seems to work. All of them have length 10. We can go ahead and try to pass that through our data loader, as before. And as we see, that seems to work. It's not complaining. Let's take a look at one batch. That works fine. But now, Pay attention to the following. Let's say we take this first batch of two elements. In this case, we're padding both to length 10, but we actually only needed three, because this is three and this is two. I mean, the length of them are three and two. And the same goes, for example, if our batch happened to be this one. We will be basically kind of wasting all these positions here. And that can be sometimes wasteful because it could be that whenever we are passing that to our network that we are carrying out computations that we don't quite need or that could limit our batch size, for example, that we are we're using. And um, we might want to take advantage of, of all our com computation capacity and, for example, be able to adapt this length according to what is actually strictly needed. So that is exactly what we're going to do next. So let's take now a look at another solution, which will hopefully also help us to grasp how powerful it is to understand the inner workings of the data loader and the collate function. We have here the original toy data set that we created before, and let's just print it out to see how it looks like. Each item has a sequence of different length that we need to batch together. So if you try to pass that to our data loader, we're going to get our familiar error. So let's try to fix that. So what we're trying to do, we're going to do is to add here an argument, I mean to pass an argument here, which is a function that we're going to call dynamic length collate for the reasons we explained uh, a few moments ago. So let's try to implement that. So 
So this function is going to take a batch, as we said before. And the first thing we need to do is to figure out which is the maximum length right, of the sequence that we have in our items. So we have to look at all the items and figure out which is the sequence length. So once we have that, we can actually create our padded X batch, so to speaking. Um, so for, to do that, we just go through the items. And uh, what we are going to do is first of all, figure out which is the padded length that we need for this specific batch. And that will be basically the difference between the maximum sequence length and the sequence length of the X at hand, right? So the next thing we have to do is to kind of pad it. We're also going to pad now with zeros. And um, so we're going to add to our original item, I mean to our original sequence in the item, we're going to add the padding part, right? So basically that is all we need for each item. So we're going to append that to our list. And we could return the batch X, that will be the padded X's. For the case of the Y's, it's a bit easier because we just have integers like here and here. So we're just going to collect them. And that is going to be basically our um, collate function. So let me just put this in a dictionary for the sake of clarity and uh, that's how we're going to put together our batches. So now we pass that function to our data loader and let's see what happens. So we put it there and it seems to work. As we see each batch has sequences that have different lengths. So each batch for example this one has two elements and the first one has been padded with one zero to match the sequence length three. But in the second example here, we have the first element of the batch to have five elements. So that's okay. We don't, so that's the maximum length for this case. And the second element had originally only three elements. So we pad that twice. And same applies for the other example. So, that's basically how we can add this very simple logic here to our data loader and tell exactly how we want to put together the items of our data set. So as I said before, what we actually want to do is then go over the batches of our data loader and do stuff with it. For example, generate predictions from a network. So let's just look at a tour example of how that would look like. So we have here a simple model which is an LSTM so we're going to feed a sequence into this model and um, we're going to go through the batches and generate predictions for them. So in order for this to work since we're working with PyTorch here we need to change the type of these outputs here so we need to turn them into uh, tensors so we're going to do that very quickly and basically that will be it. So with that in place, our data loader, as we see, is going to return tensors now, which have the proper shape, um, I mean, that we're going to bring into the proper shape here. And as we see, that seems to work. So we can look at the predictions um, of our network in this case, and we see that's, that's working. So to sum up, we learned what the collate function is in the PyTorch data loader and we also looked at a concrete example on how to put together batches that may come with different, in this case, sequence length and uh, do that in a way that is efficient in the sense that we adapt dynamically to each batch and uh, yeah, with that bring our data loader to work and uh, we were able to generate predictions from this little network. So, hope you learned something. 
let me know if there are any comments or thoughts on it and see you next time